What's going on everyone and welcome back to Generation Zero. For today's video we have another weapon tier list comparing the submachine guns in the game. We'll start with what I think is the best weapon and through some quick math and some in-game testing we'll figure out what is truly the best SMG in the game. For today's weapons we have two really reliable guns when you just want to fire off a ton of bullets. The HP5 and the M46 k -Pist. We'll compare these guns based on three factors. Their rate of fire, their accuracy, and then how well they actually perform when fighting robots. Alongside that, we'll talk a little bit about the trivia behind the guns, the base stats, and about the various attachments they receive. So let's just jump right into it and start talking about the SMGs and Gen Z. So the HP5 in Generation Zero is based off of the MP5 by Heckler and Koch and is one of the most widely used submachine guns in the world, actually, seeing service all the way from 1966 to this present day. It's used by 40 of the world's nations and is used by law enforcement all the way up to military. You also might have seen this weapon in the 1983 James Bond film, Never Say Never Again, alongside many appearances in other video games. In game, the HP5 is a reliable gun with a high rate of fire. With its extended mag, you get 45 bullets per magazine. It's equipable with an ACOG sight and has three barrel options, a silencer, a compensator, and a barrel extension. The compensator is designed to reduce recoil when firing in full auto, where the barrel extension will increase the velocity of each bullet, allowing them to fire further and slightly more accurately. Depending on how you want to use your submachine gun will decide which attachment you decide to use. But personally, I usually go with the compensator and use the SMG as a medium range deterrent to large groups of enemies. And on top of that, I like to use SMGs against harvesters and tanks as they are the largest targets in the game, allowing you to just kind of spray them with bullets and blast a whole bunch of weak points. At a max level, the HP5's gun damage is 4, the handling is 13, and the rate of fire is 10. But we'll break down the rate of fire and handling into the simpler methods that I've developed for testing guns in this game. We'll also compare the silencer's effect on the HP5 and the k -Pist side by side when we're talking about the k -Pist next. For now, let's get into determining the rounds per minute and figure out the accuracy of the HP5. So the methods that I use to test the guns in this game are pretty simple, but to figure out our rounds per minute, we'll simply fire as many bullets as we can in the span of a minute using a stopwatch and subtract the initial ammo count from the final ammo count to figure out the RPM. And to find the accuracy, we'll do a simplified target test, firing all of our rounds in a single clip, scoring them, multiplying by 10, and then turning that fraction into a percentile so it's really easy for you all to understand. So for the final results here, I was actually really surprised by the lack of accuracy with the HP5. Some shots landed as far as the one point line and almost a third of the shots didn't even make it into the black rings. If you're using the HP5 with a bit of a spray and pray approach, it definitely does its job, but between the gun's erratic spread and incredibly low damage, the HP5 is not the reliable SMG I thought it was before putting it to the test here. But for now, let's see how the k -Pist does next. So first things first, a little bit of trivia. The k -Pist is a tried and true Swedish machine gun. In real life, the M46 k -Pist is actually called the Kulsbrut Pistol M45. Uh, so the difference is only a single digit. But it was Sweden's reinvention of a number of old style submachine guns from around the world. And safe to say they made their own beast of an SMG here, as the M45 became the standard submachine gun of the Swedish army from 1945 to 1965, only losing after two decades of use to the AK-4 and the AK-5, 
which is a dang battle rifle. So that says a lot for this SMG. Though not as iconic as the MP5, the k history and the engineering behind it is a great example of Swedish ingenuity, especially during post-World War II's economic expansion. Now for the video gamey stuff. The k has all of the same attachments as the HP5, save for a larger extended magazine, carrying 51 bullets, 6 more shots than the HP5. But overall, stat-wise, I think that this is where things get a little bit more interesting, as the wiki doesn't seem to be finished for Generation Zero as of right now. So I've done some looking into it myself, and I believe the special stats or the max level stats for the k are a 3 for damage, a handling of 12, and a rate of fire being 13. Now let's compare the silencer's effect on both the HP5 and the k -Pist. So in the end, the k -Pist does seem much louder than the HP-5. It's potentially due to the sound of the ammo being fed up from the mag to the chamber, but I believe the gunshot sound effect was also a lot louder for the k -Pist. Um Personally, yeah, I definitely think that the HP-5 is the more stealthy weapon between the two. So finally here, let's see what the k -Pist's rounds per minute are. And also, let's see how it does for the accuracy test. So from that little test there, we can determine that the k -Pist is deadly. The accuracy on this gun is actually wild. As the clip started to drain down to less than half of the magazine, the spread started to really affect both the k -Pist and the HP-5. But where the HP-5 started to regularly score threes, fours, and even ones, the k -Pist held itself together pretty well, maintaining sixes, fives, and then recentering back to the target as the clip rounded off. The base damage being one point lower might affect taking down robots efficiently, but uh, really we'll only be able to figure that out with some gameplay. So we'll have to see if the higher accuracy and rate of fire truly means that the k -Pist is the better of the two SMGs, but we'll be testing this down at Torsberga Fort as usual. Uh, this time we will include the tank though in our list of targets to see how these weapons compare against the larger enemies in the game.
So in the end, the K-Pist was slower than the HP-5 by about 25 seconds, and that was entirely due to its lack of punch against the tank in the end. The tank could take another extra 5-6 to six bullets to destroy a component from the K-Pist in comparison to the HP-5. On top of that, with the lack of punch, a few times the runners could actually get in close enough to melee me, which definitely wasted some time as well. But when it came down to actually fighting the runners, I think that the K-Pist did much better at dispatching them from a uh, medium to far distance in comparison to the HP-5. Shot for shot, it remained way more accurate. So, what we can tell from these tests are that these guns are really well balanced. I was really surprised by the K-Pist's ability to keep up with the HP-5 and even outperform it in a bunch of ways. I think that if you were to have a more long distance build favoring fighting enemies at a range, the K-Pist would be the better SMG choice by far. But if you have like a stealthy build or a simple run and gun build, the HP-5 has much more utility for those roles. Uh, so what do you guys think is the best SMG? Let me know down in the comments, and if you have any more SMGs that you'd like to see brought to the game, sound those off in the comments as well, because we might just see them in the game someday. For now, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe for the latest info on Generation Zero, plus the most in-depth dives on everything to do for this game. Peace out, folks.